Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome to a new episode of our Fixed Perspective Scroller. Today we're going to set the UI of our quest so we can show the information inside a scroll view and we also will have some buttons that will allow us to accept and exit the window. Also the size of our text and our content is going to be dynamic, so if we have more content here this is going to enlarge by itself and allow us to scroll. So let's get started. We had the canvas with the character info and also a dialog box, which we used to open and close. Now we also want to create a quest info panel. Okay, so this is just an empty object. So I'm going to do it again to show you guys. I'm going to shut down this one. I'm going to close the quest grid, which I'm going to also go through later. but. Right now we're going to see how I made the quest info. So first, what you want to do is in your canvas, make a empty new object and we're going to rename it. Uh, in my case, I call it quest info. You can call it whatever you want. And inside we will have a background. So we just create a UI image and you see we have something there. It's just a small rectangle, but this rectangle is actually going to have the size of whatever we give it to. So how do I set it on the corner and and exactly how did I set it here? What I do is I set the anchor to the left. You can do this. You can set the anchor to the left and set a width. So for example, this specific case, I was uh, 700 and 750. So our small square there didn't move because we have to also set the stretch. So we click this, you'll see the values here change to left, top, right and bottom. So we want to set all those to zero. This is the actual distance from the anchor to the content. So if we make it zero, there is no margin. There is no padding between the, the you can see it actually here. There is no difference here. If we add 20, we're going to get a margin of 20 from the left. So we wanted to make we want to make it zero. And also the quest info that we just created, we need to set the position. So what I'm going to do in this case, what I did for my the one I already made, I had a margin of 60 from the left and minus 20 from the top. But if you realize something weird happened, we move up in the corner. That's because our pivot point is set to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So we want to have our pivot point on the left, so that's zero. And we want to have the pivot point also on the top, the top left corner, so that's one. So right now you see the values changed by themselves because they want to keep the position that we set before we change the pivot. So we're just going to set those values again to 60 and minus 20. So right now you see we have a very similar two windows with the same distance from the frame of our game window. Now you saw the image actually is occupying all the area of our quest info object. And we would like to, maybe not in your case, but I would like to make it a little bit transparent. So the next thing we have to do is make a scroll viewport. So in our, oh, and by the way, rename your image to background or panel or whatever you would like to call it. I'm just going to call it background. So if you want to be consistent with me, background, and I'm, oops, and remember to add your G here background and I'm going to create a UI scroll view. So you see there is something pop up in the middle of our background. So scroll view has a viewport, it has a, a scroll bars and inside the viewport there is something called content. Okay, so our content is going to be down there so we will be able to scroll it. So first I'm going to change the scroll view name to info because here is going to be the info of our quest. And also I want to set the size, but we're not going to set it through direct transform. We're going to let the background take care of our of the size of our viewport. So how do we do that? How do we let the background decide the size for our info? It's very easy. We add something called layout group and we want to have a vertical layout group. Okay, so you saw now the viewport move up to the left. 
So what we need to do in order to make it expand is here. We go to the info, the viewport, we go to it and add a layout element component. This is going to let us set some settings, for example, minimum height, minimum width, etc. So the other thing we want to do in the background is <clears throat> here, there is an option called child control size. So we want to control the width and the height. So now you saw it forced the expansion of our child, which is the info uh, scroll viewport to occupy the whole area of our background. But we don't want it to go all the way to the side. So we can add some padding here. I'm going to add 10 or I think in my previous case, I used 20, 20, 20 and 20. Yeah, something about that. And spacing is so because here you can have many different elements. So for example, if I duplicate the info, you so there is two, two elements in our scroll view, sorry, uh, two elements in our layout group. So because there is two elements in our layout group, we can set an amount, a size of how much we want to separate each element. And we don't need that. So uh, that's one thing, the info. And we also want to add these two buttons. So as you see here in my quest info, I added two buttons inside a just a empty object. So I'm going to create also inside background here. So they are same level with the information. I'm going to create an empty object. I'm just going to rename it to buttons. So buttons is going to be a layer group, but this time horizontal. So it shows all our buttons horizontally. I had set this one, so I'm just going to copy this, copy component and paste the values here, paste component values. So you see, I aligned the child, I aligned the children in the middle center. I have a spacing of 20 here, that spacing. And I child control the size and width and height, but I only expand the height. I don't want to expand the width. Now the scroll view here is actually separately exactly in two halves and we don't want the buttons to have that much area. So what we have to do is here in background, we're not going to force the expansion of the height. So there you see everything got shrinked and we can see it here better here, the buttons and the information they got their height shrink down to 10. We can set a preferred width and a preferred height for our object. So what I'm going to do here in uh, info, we have the layout element component. I'm going to set a preferred height. And you could also add a minimum height. So it's never going to be less than, for example, 200 pixels. But if there is enough room for it, is going to prefer the height of, let's say 500 or even more, 600, something around that. And also I want to remove the horizontal scroll bar because I don't think I'm going to need it. So now we start having something similar to what I did before. Right now, what we need to add is uh, the text element here inside the information and also the buttons. So let's add the buttons first. I'm going to just create a UI element button and you see it went up there. So we want to make this a layout element. So it went down there to the middle and we want to have a minimum width, which I'm going to set to something about 250. And the text of the button, I'm going to increase its size to around 45 so we can see the text clearly and I'm sorry my voice is <clears throat> I'm quite sick I got sick I always get sick during the holidays anyways um, yeah here in so right now if we duplicate this button you will see that it going it's going to get aligned and resize by itself not resize but just uh, aligned properly uh, no matter how many buttons we have and because our minimum width is 250 you see it's going to go out of bounds so what we want to do in buttons is for each button instead of setting the minimum width to 250 we could set it to something like 
100 and maybe 150 but the prefer width make it 250 so it's going to find a value a value between 150 and 250 depending on how much room it has so if i add one more then it's going to go shrink all the way down to 150 and if i only have two buttons they're going to be 250 but they're not going to expand all the way out so <clears throat> i'm going to rename these to accept and cancel so we'll have um, right now we're just going to have two buttons and remember to change their labels to the text and this is cancel <clears throat> and don't don't add that extra don't x the extra line there i just always forget i can't press enter at the end but anyways so right now we have the buttons and we have the info now we need to add the content so finally we're going to add some text here and what i did before in my previous example is i have different game objects different text game objects with different names and basically they're all part of a of this content which is also a vertical layer group so that's the first thing we're going to do in content we're going to add a there's two things we need to add actually something called content size feature and what this does is it changes the size of our of this rec transform component based on your content so if you have some children's and they are a lot of children's then your size is going to fit them and if you get rid of your children's then you're going to shrink down so your size is always uh consistent with the size of your children's so in this case we want to add a content feature here content size feature and we want to make it a vertical fit so here in vertical fit we're going to use the minimum size and we also want to add a layout group element i mean layout group component is a vertical layout group and how we want to set it is uh, just a spacing of 20 and you can set your padding however you like if you would like to have maybe like two i can, can do it like this so it's not actually right next to the sides of our of our content and also the content should child control the size of the width and the expansion of the width only <clears throat> so here i'm going to set this like that now we are going to create a ui text and you see it's quite small so i'm going to increase the size to maybe 40 and you see our text disappeared so what we can do in order to make it change its size because right now the text is bigger than the size of our component here the size the height is just 30 so if i increase the height if i were to increase the height and the width we could see the text but right now because the height is too small we can't see it so what can we do to make it scale by itself is also use the content size feeder is the content size feeder is going to see the size of this text and it's going to change the size of our rep transform based on it so if I remember correctly, I yeah, the vertical feed we change it, so it changed on the preferred size. And you see now we can see our text because the height is going to be driven by the content size feature. So right now we can use that, and the width is the width can just be the width of the content. So here, this width, and maybe we can make this a little bit bigger. Uh, how much am I using here? Name. I'm using 50. I'm going to use also 50 here. But also set your pivot because right now the pivot is up there. So you see the text went up. So we can change the pivot to be 0 and 1 and change the alignment of our text. So the alignment of our text here, the pivot on X is 0 and the Y is 1. So right now you see the text is perfectly aligned with the top left corner of our content. <clears throat> now, finally, we want to 
duplicate these a few times so we have uh, and remember you can rename by pressing f2 we can call it name and we have a description we have a task and then we have a reward and actually depending on your game you can change these names accordingly to what things you want to show in your quest info so <clears throat> now um, if I was going to change the text of this so something like this and sorry for my uh, lorem ipsum or whatever copy this and, and paste it down here you see everything is going to change by itself and if I play now I actually can drag this and show whatever I want to show so I can copy this and keep pasting it and you can you have a, a scroll view but right now we can scroll it on the left and right which is not correct so we want to fix that and how do we fix it is very simple we go all the way to our info panel which was the scroll viewport and we want to change the not the movement type here there is something called horizontal and vertical we just want vertical so it's only vertical movement it will depend on your quest if you want horizontal as well of course you can do that so now we can move it left and right so then i use that quest info to show the information of my quest and basically that's it that's how you make a panel that can scroll and can be size dynamic so it can adjust to the size of any quest that you fit the info to so you don't have to set everything manually this is going to be set by itself so then i think you get the idea of how did i, I how i made this quest grid which is basically the same as my quest info just uh, instead of in the content instead of using a vertical layout i used a sorry i used a grid layout so here in the info viewport content you see this is a grid layout so that when i have this quest and then i have many quests that i can select i just have it like that so it's something like that and i think you get the idea of how to do it you can use child expand so they expand to to a preferred size you can play around with the values so um yeah that's it for this video and in the next video we're going to actually uh, get the quest from the NPC here, mummies everywhere, and we're going to be able to accept the quest and place it here, so that then we can open it wherever and see the information again. But right now you see, oh, I only have cancel option. I don't have asset. I don't have the accept function. So everything is a little bit dynamic. So that's what we're going to do on the next episode. We're also going to close that window. Um, so yeah thank you very much for watching i'm looking forward for making the next video and i hope you enjoyed and i also want to thank deeply to all my patrons we have a new patron and so thank you very much guys really i really appreciate your help you're making me uh, very inspired and also you're making me actually have more time to make my videos so thanks a lot i will see you next time goodbye and happy holidays